we'll come to an inspiring chat on how to innovate in technologies. Um, I'm really happy to welcome you uh, in the new series that we are starting today. Um, this series um, is hosted under the umbrella of the EINS project, of the EIT Hey Initiative EINS project, together in cooperation with the Digital Makers Hub. So, uh, our speakers today um, that will uh, discuss the cooperations and how it is possible to innovate in digital technologies are Hannes Rafasera uh, from Saxbergen uh, University of Applied Sciences. He's Chief Research and Innovation Officer and also the coordinator of the Uterus Project. We have mm -hmm. Veronica Rodriguez with us. She's from EIT Manufacturing and the Risk Operations Manager. Bala Ali Rohani uh, is from our startup, or is a startup that is cooperating uh, with the EIT Hay Project. And the startup is called Data Corner. And our uh, fourth guest is Mefat Shabani, and he uh, will, uh, is representing the startup core. IT. So, what can you to, uh, expect today uh, from this inspiring chat? Um, so, our agenda is to first make an intro and present you the EIT Hey Eins project, and then also um, EIT manufacturing and the startups Data Corner and Core IT. So, you can grasp um, the main um, operation aims that they are having and want to present you. And then uh, we will have a part um, that's uh, inspiring. Let's dream big. So let yourself be surprised on the imp uh, inspiring um, our speakers. And then a second part uh, is on build strong relationships. So you will get some insights uh, from our speakers. And then we will close with a wrap up. All right. So um, just shortly and brief what the EINS project is before I give over to Hannes. Uh, yeah, what EIT Hey EINS does is that we uh, uh, open up a novel pathway for entrepreneurial universities. We will support startups and establish businesses and also uh, facilitate collaboration. And what does this mean um, in, in, how do we say, uh, at the moment and how it was set up that I would hand over to Hannes that can give you a deeper insight about um, on first the UDRES Entrepreneurship Network and also on EINS um, and its aims, how it was set and built up. Hannes, may I give over to you? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Um, uh, good afternoon to everybody. It's uh, my great uh, pleasure to, to be here with you and, and to speak about uh, innovation uh, with technologies uh, and, and to present our uh, European University Alliance UDRES and in particular our uh, EINS project. Um, I try to keep it really brief. Uh, UDRES is one of the alliances uh, funded under the European, European University Initiative um, which is, I think, uh, one of the uh, important uh, excellence initiatives of the European Commission to uh, further develop the European um, uh, education, research and innovation uh, area. Um, UDRES has now six full and three uh, associated uh, members, uh, universities all from, from all over Europe. Um, if you talk about UDRES, it's important to know that we have uh, in the very beginning the E to the power of three. Uh, this stands for um, entrepreneurial, engaged, and European, and we have the squared S in the end, uh, which uh, means uh, smart and sustainable uh, European regions. Um, the EINS project uh, within the very uh, uh, fascinating, from, from my per uh, perspective, fascinating EIT Hay initiative, an important uh, initiative, um, this this uh, EINS project is the UDRES Entrepreneurship and Innovation Network uh, for Smart and Sustainable Regions. So um, all what we are doing within uh, EINS and UDRES is, uh, I think, strongly linked to entrepreneurship, to innovation, um, to engagement uh, also for a society. And, and if we talk about uh, digital uh, technologies and innovation in this sense, 
um, then, then we come to, I think, quite a lot of uh, highly important um, issues, uh, challenges that we have to overcome. I just want to briefly mention a few of them. First of all, uh, in the global sense, innovation is really highly concentrated in just a few uh, worldwide uh, innovation centers. Um, I think probably the most uh, well-known still is uh, Silicon Valley. There are some others in, in Asia and so on. Um, Europe is still, in many senses, maybe one, two steps uh, behind these uh, innovation centers. Um, and especially in Europe, uh, we have our various diverse uh, European uh, regions. Um, and if we want to uh, support innovation, we also have to support uh, this um, region. So this is one aspect that uh, uh, we are doing at UDRES and, and the INS network. Um, a second thing I would like to mention is uh, innovation is always about diversity and is always about uh, people. Um, so what we try uh, to do at uh, UDRES and, and uh, INS in particular is to support uh, these uh, individuals. Uh, so um, we speak about the so-called ant renovators and ant renovators uh, in, in UDRES uh, means uh, entrepreneurs, researchers, educators, innovators. Um, and uh, we really want to empower and support uh, these uh, open-minded uh, people to bridge the gaps uh, within uh, the, the knowledge triangle. And of course, we want to enhance entrepreneurial education and we want to link uh, smart specialization and open innovation to these uh, kind of things. A very last uh, statement is um, if we speak about innovation, then I think it's uh, quite obvious that um, innovation usually today or too often uh, happens off some beaten academic tracks. So if, even, even if we go to Silicon Valley, if you ask what, what the most successful innovators and entrepreneurs there have in common, then um, one thing is that they usually do not have a university degree. So um, how can we keep the universities in the loop? Um, one thing is, of course, we try to support startups, startups from our students uh, and so on. Um, but uh, the other thing is we really have to open ourselves and, and ask startups uh, to collaborate with us, um, either if they come from our students, our staff or not. I think this is not, not very important about this uh, question. Um, we can learn a lot from startups and, and their culture. Uh, their open-minded attitude and startups can benefit, of course, or hopefully from universities and research institutions. Uh, and I think this is what we uh, try to do, what we try to support. So these are my first, uh, I think, most important things. And, and of course, we are very happy to do all the things uh, within uh, the EIT Hay initiative with the help of the EIT, uh, which is uh, a great help and a good experience uh, for us. Thanks a lot, Hannes. Um, could you maybe also just shortly say three sentences about the cooperation that we're having here with the Digital Makers Hub and also how the inspiration and chats also may have yes, came up? Um, because, no, uh, yeah. Uh, sure. So thanks for this uh, reminder. Um, you dress and Eins, we always try to be an open community. And so we try to collaborate and cooperate with as many initiatives as possible. And, and one, I think uh, also quite successful uh, initiative that we have here in, in Austria uh, uh, led by St. Pölten University of Applied Sciences is the so-called Digital Makers Hub. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, nationally funded uh, digital innovation hubs here in Austria. And the unique focus of the Digital Makers Hub is that we uh, here try to uh, support uh, an, a new culture, a culture that we call uh, the digital makers uh, uh, culture, a, a digital culture, which is, uh, uh, I think, characterized uh, by open innovation, new forms of collaboration, co-ideation, co-creation, and all these kind of things. I think it's uh, more or less obvious. Um, if, <clears throat> if we want to 
successfully innovate uh, in digital technologies. And if we want to make this digital and green uh, transformation happen, then we need uh, uh, really an, an open uh, uh, an, an open culture for collaboration uh, within uh, quite a lot of, of uh, different partners. And this is what we try to support also with the Digital Makers Hub. Thanks, Hannes. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward and I hope that in the ICE project, yeah, we can have some events or cooperation activities also within the Digital Makers Hub. And yes, as we have the startups here, I think this is also a very nice platform to know uh, to know about and also to uh, yeah attach maybe if you're in the area to the activities that are ongoing. Um, yes, then now, uh, yes, as you have seen, we like uh, a lot of cooperation. And then we have a very uh, strong pillar as um, EIT Hey Eins. You can already hear is, um, is funded by EIT. So we also invited um, the one part of the big EIT community also to present uh, themselves and opportunities that may arise for for our stakeholders of the project, so for all of us. And yeah, Veronica, so I hand over to you. And yes, let us know uh, about EIT manufacturing and how we can connect uh, and work with the EIT manufacturing community. Of course, thank you very much. So maybe shall I share the screen and prepare a couple of, of slides? Um, and if I, can you see my PowerPoint? I cannot hear you, Malou, you are muted. Yes, I was muted, yeah. I said, like, yes, we can see your slide, okay. or it's good. <laughs> okay, so let me start. So basically, I I am Veronica Rodriguez. Thank you very much for inviting me to this nice and interesting talk. Uh, as as Malvo was saying, I am part of EAT Manufacturing. I am particularly working in something called the Region Innovation Scheme under EAT Manufacturing. So. Just a brief note about what, what is this. Basically, EIT manufacturing is one of this, let's call it delegations of the EIT, the European Institute of Technology and Innovation. Um, they have several communities with several thematics and I am belonging to the manufacturing one. We are now two or three years old already. So we are one of the newest communities. And basically our mission is somehow to boost innovation all around Europe in the manufacturing sector. We try to do so by implementing programs in three main pillars, which are innovation, education, and business creation. And this is a common practice in all the kicks, all the knowledge innovation communities that are part of the EAT as EAT manufacturing. And we are also having RIS, the regional innovation scheme as a Mm, transversal pillar, which basically uh, promotes activity in these three main uh, pillars, education, innovation, and business creation. But we are focusing on those countries that have been um, rated as modest innovators in Europe. So basically, Southern and Central Eastern part of Europe. And I am particularly belonging to this pillar within EAT manufacturing. So basically what is great about these communities, these uh, kicks is the networks that we are having. We are trying basically to connect organizations coming from the industry, but also from the universities and RTOs. So this is an example of what we are having in our network at EAT Manufacturing, but you can multiply this by all of the eight kicks that we think we already are. Also within EAT manufacturing, we have four focus areas. Uh, we are trying to focus our activities in four main topics. One is of course, lowering the environmental footprint in the manufacturing sector, having more flexible and production systems for more competitive industries and human machine co-working to somehow enhance and, and introduce everyone in, in these industries and manufacturing workshops. And of course, more related to the topic of today, digital and collaborative solutions for innovative manufacturing ecosystems. So this is basically the focus areas in which we are developing our programs in, at EAT Manufacturing. We are having five, uh, six CLCs already, which are basically delegations, uh, offices uh, spread around Europe and we, 
in each of them, we, we take care of certain uh, countries in Europe. And also in risk countries, as I was saying, these modest innovators, uh, we are having also organizations that are mainly RTOs and universities that are representing us. And these organizations are having a mission of spreading the word about what EAT manufacturing is doing and how can we help to boost innovation uh, in, this, in these particular countries. So I just will quickly go over a couple of programs that I think that will be um, the most interesting uh, for you, but I will always encourage you to check websites, not only of EAT manufacturing, but also the other kicks. But um, let me introduce you a couple of our activities. Um, this is the EAT Jump Starter, uh, and this is a pre-accelerator program, which we are running together with all the kicks. Uh, meaning this is a cross-kick project. Uh, this is something that you will hear about uh, in the EAT community, uh, which means that basically we have multiplied our network working in this project by eight. So basically what we are aiming here is to um, take idea holders, um, technical people, scientists, master students, pre-docs, um, pre post-docs, scientists that have a technical idea and they want to develop, this, or they think this idea have a market potential and they want to bring this idea to the market, but they don't have knowledge about entrepreneurships or, or how to develop a business. So basically this pre-accelerator aims to give these people the training related to the basic entrepreneurial skills we are also having some uh, small grants to support the beginning of the, of the business of this, the teams that we are taking in our program. And we guide them and mentor them uh, with the idea that at the end of the program, they can develop uh, the idea and they can create a company indeed. And well, for you to know, this is a year program, a one year program happening all year. Now we have it open already the pre Mm, registration, but the registration will open again in January. So you can keep an eye on this in, if, in, if this is of interest for you um, as a way of, you know, more delayed, maybe more related to education in business creation for first stages if you are uh, having a, a technical or deep tech idea. We are having also next year uh, evolution of research results. So basically this is a program that we are launching with the with idea of um, focusing maybe in university departments, uh, scientists that have already a prototype and they want to scale up this prototype and they want to introduce the pro this prototype in a um, company. So basically uh, the target audience is the startups and master and scientists and PhD students. And we're having up to 50K of uh, financial support for scaling up the prototypes that they have developed in the lab. We will be launching this again as a, as a one year program at the beginning of next year. So if you're interested, uh, you can keep an eye on LinkedIn or contact me and I can give you more details. And last program that I thought would be of interest for you is somehow also uh, related to mixing um, education, entrepreneur and the industry. So basically here we are asking for consortiums in which we are having a manufacturing company. And in the manufacturing company, there is uh, maybe someone having an idea on how to, how to enhance the manufacturing company to make it greener, more socially uh, friendly, more digital, more flexible in terms of production. So basically there is one entrepreneur in this company who is having this idea and he or she can collaborate with a startups or scientists or students that uh, he or she might think that can incorporate the solution and can enhance the manufacturing company. So they are applying to the program as a consortium and the idea is that they are developing this pilot project of the solution provider, the technical guy or girl that is implementing it on the manufacturing company. And again, this is 
a program in which we are giving up to 50K of financial support. And well, I hope this gives you kind of an idea of the kind of programs that we are having at in, in the EAT community in the different kicks. There are, of course, much more of them. You can also check the education pillar or the business creation pillar uh, in which we are having also um, doctorate programs, masters or um, more, more mature uh, accelerators. And yeah, the idea is that behind these programs, we are somehow supporting uh, to boost innovation in the, in the um, European countries. And yeah, I think this is more or less a good summary of it and a good example. So thank you, Malgo. Thank you, Veronica. I think, yeah, so uh, I hope we have, uh, uh, we will ha hear also a little bit more. Um, I have posted some links about the uh, challenges you're, you're muted. Yes, I'm muted. It's very, it's always super when we talk when we're muted. Yeah, so thank you very much. And then the short, uh, this is a good, uh, good um, handing over. Uh, yeah, and I think we will take some of these examples uh, into the discussion. And yeah, let's dive in and get some insights about the startups that are cooperating with us. So Vala, I would please invite you to also present your startup data corner to our uh, listeners and participants of the inspiring chats. Yes. Um, hello. Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon. And uh, thank you for your invitation. Uh, so I am Vala, the founder of uh, Data Corner Group. Uh, we are a Portuguese company uh, based in Lisbon. And uh, we are active in big data uh, analytics area. Uh, for this session, uh, I'm presenting one of our uh, recent uh, projects that it is a um, digital marketplace uh, for upskilling uh, empowered by artificial uh, intelligence. So it is a kind of the social networks that can uh, use the uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms uh, to connect people together uh, helping them to uh, get up skills, to get, enhance their uh, knowledge, uh, and uh, aiming to uh, globally uh, improve the global knowledge. Thank you. That was really, yeah. No, sir. As what well, as a moderator wishes for uh, when you present yourself. Uh, yeah, we will have a. Uh, I will have then later also some questions maybe to that if I am allowed to jump into your uh, discussion about who dream how to pick how to have big dreams. Uh, yeah, and now I'm also asking Mefat, please can you please also give us a little insight into your startup, the Core IT? Sure, sure. Thank you. I will share my screen. I believe you can see the screen, right? Okay, perfect. So hi everyone, my name is uh, Mefat Shabani and uh, over the past year, I have uh, opened a startup in Estonia called Core IT. And this came uh, with the main uh, idea that I have been having on the past years, combining development with IT security. Uh, I have over a, a decade in the security field and one of the main problems we have seen with those enterprises and big companies, even startups and small companies, is that they pay a lot of attention on the developing and creating an awesome product, but they don't pay in that much attention to the security part. And since the, these past few years that everything went remotely, that was so unexpected, uh, we, we saw that uh, the entire world, even the, the security companies were, were lacking in, in, in this part. So I, uh, I had this idea to, to have a digital focus, uh, let's say to, to have uh, the main mission. My main mission that we started the company was to take complex problems and deliver simple solutions. This, this was because security is, is really complex problems nowadays. So we, we, we developed and we, we created a team with years of experience in developing and, and security so we can move and take those complex problems and deliver simple solutions to, to everyone. 
So yeah, as, as I mentioned be before, we specialized in web application development, uh, infrastructure, mobile app development, cybersecurity, and uh, those artificial intelligence, machine learning, and everything combined with the security part. This is the, the main purpose, let's say, that core IT ex ex exists. Uh, we, we, we have uh, 10 years of best practices. We, we have uh, made researches. We have studied a lot of this field. We, we are like daily learners. We read, we practice, and we, we like what, what we do. So some of you banks, we, uh, bands we have worked during the, the couple of, of, of years starting is the Coca-Cola, Amazon, Nomad, Shogu, Nescafe, and, and VKC. Five of them are based on the United States. And uh, we, we, we are the, one of the of officials in Albania of Coca-Cola systems and security that we, we are, we are pro providing. So a few, few to go quickly to not go so specific. We, on, on the de development part, we, we do basically with companies from start till, till the end. This is an approach that mostly companies like. We are like a consultants that, that we want to take company from scratch and make an awesome products that they, they will like and that they will enjoy. So this is why we created all services included in, into one. And, and this uh, comes with uh, to think sharp, we need to build fast and we need to deploy frequently because whoever works in, in the IT and like uh, IT and especially in the security park, there are every day some new things. This is why it's challenging and this is why people in this field, there will be always coming something new. You will have always something to do. So you will be always with, you need to be always positive, always communicative and uh, always passionate about the, the work. And some of those technologies, as we said, are like for softwares from uh, mobile, for database, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learnings, code reviews, quality assurance, they, they, they combine everything in, into one. Uh, the same for the, the mobile de developments that uh, we, we take the same approach. We, we create the solutions web, mobile, combined uh, since with, with always security in our mind. And yeah, the, the, the part I think that uh, our company love, love the most is the cybersecurity services we, we, we do offer that, that, that starts uh, from the, the main thing that we, we believe really, uh, has the entire market is the blockchain starting from uh, uh, online payments, how those uh, payments make security of payments, security of channels payments, uh, blockchains, uh, how how those markets of how those online trades are doing we work with financial institutions as well and this is one of the main part that uh, except those we have on, on, on testing where we do is like the penetration testing slide we have uh, web uh, penetration testing external internal mobile application testing that do it to to the time uh, i will not go through so detail i'm just uh, trying to give an overall idea that uh, this all of them all those services come to risk assessment that we do for every of our clients that we identify security threats we assess security risk and we deploy what what we we think that it's it's best and except what we do for companies we, we have an initiative started uh, this summer that we are collaborating with high schools and we are looking now to collaborate with universities that, that it's called security awareness training. Because we, we have seen like in the past recent years that the online world has, has become a threat to many people, especially those, those young generations that are browsing the social media every day and they might not be aware of how what is privacy and how they can, they can protect their privacy. And the, the most important, what are their online rights? So we, we, we said, uh, trainings that uh, we, we uh, created a program that uh, everyone could could be part of it that is not related to, to IT so everyone can get an idea on how they can be secure on, online especially on on the teenager and and students this is one of the parts that uh, we, we we love to train them because this is like uh, there will be the future of 
of of our engineers and they have to to know how dangerous can be the web so they can use it and uh, they, they can be always protected and be safe while browsing it yeah and as i mentioned how we do combine all the, all of those things it's it's like a, a huge startups especially and the big companies need always to have security in their mind if if uh, especially if they are thinking to to operate only online uh because mostly now many companies like this remote the remote allow us to co collaborate with uh, many countries many re regions in in the same time it's no more how it was years ago that that it was so so complex that's that's why we we want to to make it as secure as, as possible uh i i will uh, in, in in the progress it's uh, we we do have it's same as i said we have uh, strong security measurements when we work we follow security processes and we, we have uh, support 24 7 that that it's a, a great thing that that we we take ourselves because security it's, it's really really important and uh, how how do those companies how how we su suggest them to to move the the security and match requirements we we have this pool that we are we appreciate everyone we we are open to to all all companies we we are to open to cultures and we 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 try to make everyone feel communicated and friendly towards how how we com communicate yes and uh, this comes to to this points where we say we are always transparent in in every field and especially on, on the it and security part you have to be always transparent you have the maximum respect we we have to be really communicative because the field itself is really sensitive and we, we have to always follow the, the best best uh, 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 approach and uh, I try to gather everything in a couple of minutes so we don't extend our time. So I hope I, I had uh, explained everything. If there is any questions, I am more than happy to jump and uh, give comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mefat, for this uh, great overview of what you're doing. And yes, I think there is already some hints um, how this could be um, taken into the discussion. So, yeah, just to guide you through uh, what is next. That my slides, yeah. So the next part is um, let's dream big. So um, let's see, like, which dreams do you have uh, regarding the dream cooperation that you have? So, uh, yeah, I would uh, also ask you, to focus, um, yeah, on the topic, so uh, that that we are uh, in the sector of digital technologies. That, of course, is obvious with the startups we're having here. Uh, yeah, we're having um, the high high education uh, a bit represented by Hannes, and then uh, yeah, Veronica uh, from EIT Manufacturing. So uh, we did already the triangle. If you maybe have realized it, yeah. So we had made this innovation triangle. That is, uh, yeah mentioned by EIT Manufacturing and that was presented by Veronica. So um, yeah, we'll do um, a little creative, as this is an inspirational talk, a little creative slide into this uh, Let's Dream Big because Vala has to start because he wants to do um, a mix of uh, also giving an overview uh, about his startup and uh, how this is then this is like for you um, the possibility to do it if there is a little misunderstanding about the presentation so I'm transparent because it was mentioned by Mefat that uh, Vala has now uh, kind of the inspiration to connect his dream cooperation with what he's presenting and how he's presenting his startup there you go <laughs> Uh, yes, I got unmuted. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I prepared some slides uh, to introduce um, Alice Galaxy. Let me share my screen. Do you have my screen now? We see it. Okay, so. Okay, do you see my slides? 
Yes, all good. Okay, so let me move here. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, as I told before, Edis Galaxy is our new project and um, upskilling marketplace to enhance the global knowledge using the uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, let's start with uh, one example that just imagine that Finn is a, a math teacher uh, staying in Austria. Finn knows about mathematics, algebra, playing piano, and he would like to learn SPSS, Excel, Yuga, and gardening. At the other side of the world, Anne is a data scientist uh, staying in Sydney. She knows about data science, big data, and uh, let me, why is this? Yeah. Yeah. And she's interested to know yoga, mathematics, and French language. So, as you may guess, uh, we should find how we can connect Anne with Finn that Anne could learn mathematics from Finn. And we have tens of millions of such profiles all over the world that would like to share their skills and they would like to learn their dream skills. So how we can create a digital marketplace for trainers and learners empowered by artificial intelligence that uh, can connect these people together with uh, this uh, global uh, goal of uh, improving the global knowledge. Our vision is to enhance the global knowledge and personal skills. And to that end, we build the digital marketplace empowered by artificial intelligence to democratize the upskilling ecosystem. So Edis Galaxy aims to improve the global knowledge by discovering the talents and skill gaps, upskilling, reskilling through an online skill sharing marketplace, and measuring and monitoring the upskilling progress through the analytics dashboards. For each member, we provide the uh, upskilling uh, progress dashboards that they can see how is their uh, rank uh, comparing to the other members in three dimensions of the learning, training, and their contribution. And furthermore, we plan to have the knowledge lake, having the talents radar that uh, everyone can search uh, the skills that they would like to know, for example, in big data. And for that one, for example, for each country, we can find how many talents exist in that specific skill field and how is their upskilling progress there. In addition, uh, who are the top talents, what are the top courses that are currently running there, and how to join them. This is the overall idea. About the business model of Ellis Galaxy, uh, our revenue comes from three main channels. Premium subscriptions, mix of free and premium subscription that we will uh, create the user base, advertisements, and some commissions on the upskilling courses. Uh, you may have this question that how big is this market? According to the World Economic Forum, investment in upskilling could boost global GDP by $6.5 trillion by 2030. So we are facing the huge market in upskilling context. Uh, who are our target users? Individuals, every single person from 16 to 70 plus years old uh, that uh, has some skills to share and would like to learn some skills will be our uh, target users, potential members that can join Edis Galaxy. Universities, um, currently you know, we are in collaboration and uh, in some kind of agreement with five universities in Eldresh. And as a member of the uh, Pact for a Skill program uh, in um, European Union, uh, Edis Galaxy already uh, selected to be a platform 
uh, that in uh, next year is starting uh, to get used for the upskilling programs. Also, corporate VAT providers and government agency can be the uh, users of Elite's Galaxy. About our competitors, I can name Udemy, LinkedIn, Coursera, uh, HubSpot, and edX. And uh, there are some gaps that Elite's Galaxy is trying to address that are listed here. Social networking features uh, can help uh, the, uh, this ecosystem uh, to engage more members. A democratized digital marketplace, pointing mechanisms that we have in this galaxy to make the upskilling progress measurable, AI-based upskilling roadmap that will be provided for all the members, a analytics dashboards for monitoring the upskilling progress, and finally, global level knowledge lake that you can search any skills and find all related training, events, and other related contents. We are a team of data scientists, software developers, and academicians, all supported by Data Corner. And uh, these are some of our uh, publications uh, in this field of uh, social network analysis, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and recommender systems. Uh, data corner uh, projects are trusted by uh, the entities in the Europe level and also in Portugal. Uh, and about our uh, time lapse. Uh, uh, actually, we uh, registered the trademark of this galaxy in Europe through the uh, EU pool, uh, uh, platform. In uh, May of 2022, uh, we launched the first uh, MVP uh, in our AWS cloud uh, structure, currently available at uh, elitesgalaxy.com. And uh, after receiving the feedbacks from the pilot users uh, in this MVP, we planned the next uh, version of Elite Galaxy. Uh, in July, uh, we had a big achievement. Uh, Elite Galaxy project uh, selected by the uh, Pact for Skill programs in the European Commission in their skills partnership for the digital ecosystem. As you see the logo of the this Galaxy along uh, with the other partners here. And uh, through this proposal that we submitted, we also uh, had an agreement with five universities in uh, Eudrish to collaborate in this uh, project. Uh, we plan to launch the operational version of uh, Edis Galaxy in the coming January. Uh, that provide the uh, different features for conducting the courses, upskilling programs, and also the knowledge lake. Our plan is uh, to achieve 500,000 members by the end of 2023. So that was about the Edis Galaxy, uh, kind of the short pitch. And thank you for your attention. And let's share our skills and learn our desired skills. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Vala. Yeah. yeah. Then um, I don't know. Um, I think uh, this is a good um, a bit because I have seen that you have been awarded also by a lot of uh, um, a lot of partnerships and you have also cooperated with um, yeah, with the universities and with some startup challenges. Um, just intuitively, um, Vero, Veronica, um, I mean, what what is like your experience? Um, I mean, I know you quite well. We've been working together in the EIT Champ Starter. So I'm I'm not talking only about startups, but yeah, let's in incorporate also as the INS here a um, project is also involving students. So I mean, what what is your vision or imagination of this dream cooperation or let's dream big for idea holders, startups, but also, yeah, like for the partnership owners and the university. So like, what is your dream cooperation in this EIT triangle between research and innovation and businesses and innovation ecosystems? Yeah, uh, I think that what Vala was sharing with us was very interesting. I mean, I, I, I think it's a great idea, like, you know, having the needs and the interests of many people and then so that you can connect them. That is great. 
Uh, I, I wasn't thinking about it before, but from my experience and from what I have been seeing in the problems that we have been uh, working at, at the eating manufacturing, I could be really curious to see somehow a collaboration between, um, I mean, involving, of course, as many parts as possible. This is something that we see that is working, having industry and also an education organi an educational organization as a university working together is always great because you have both point of views, the researchers, but also like the practical minds coming from the industry. But what I am a lot of time missing is, for example, in, in this is usually seen in innovation projects, but when talking about the startups or so the teams that are just starting their, their way in the entrepreneurial world, for example, um, for example, in digital collaboration, I am seeing a lot of technical teams, a lot of researchers and scientists. And what I could love to see is that they are somehow teaming together with um, students coming from uh, universities that are social universities, uh, academic, uh, more related to business. Like I could love to see a collaboration someday of, I don't know, a guy which is, uh, you know, informatic engineer that is coming by the hand with a lawyer and they are having different PhDs and maybe they can team up together with, I don't know, MBA student. And I am missing somehow in this early stage um, phases, like a collaboration of different disciplines. I see like a bunch of teams with a lot of engineers, super technical and prepared people, but they are lacking a lot of the skills that maybe um, the social guys could bring in and I, I could love to see that and this is something that I don't usually see. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, to keep it for the wrap up. So, um, I mean, this is like the collaboration, interdisciplinary collaboration, right, that you're talking about. Yes, that, that, that is something that maybe we can see at the higher levels in innovation projects, you know, in Horizon 2020, in Horizon Europe projects and so on. But when, when I see like the teams starting to try to develop an idea, I am missing like somehow it could be great to have a program in which we are uh, pushing collaboration among the students, the students from different disciplines. When they get higher and they are already working in an industry or in a research in an RTO, they start to collaborate among them. But what what if we had those collaborations starting much earlier when they are students? I think that could be that could be great to see. Yeah, I mean. So, yeah, maybe you want to talk about the experiences that you have made with the EIT Jamstata in this uh, collaborating when connecting early stage startups with, um, I think this is yeah. really interesting for, for a lot of hubs and also like for startup programs, because I think it is like a best, best example. So, yeah. I yeah, we, we can you, clearly yeah. see in the Jamba Startup, for example, we are having like this kind of deep tech focus. So we are receiving a lot of applications and a lot of teams that are uh, basically scientists and engineers. And they are really, they have a really particular way of doing things. And I can, I can tell you so because I am also one of them. And sometimes they are um, lacking. I mean, you can see that really easily that in the university, at least here in Spain, I can tell you for sure that we, the engineers, we are not trained in marketing, for example, how to sell our idea or ourselves or how, uh, how to do a proper public speaking or these kind of skills that we are not trained at. We are uh, really efficient and we are really focused and we can solve a lot of problems, but we are missing a lot of the skills that are needed if you want to develop a business or an idea, for example. And I think um, with these kind of programs, we are training them in to do so, in to doing so. But it could be even greater if we could team them together with people that they are already having these skills, and they can both learn from each other, not only giving training to people. 
And yeah, I also now within the Younger Starter, we are having this kind of parallel pro program uh, called Commercialization Reactor. This year we are the, um, developing the pilot program in three countries. And um, basically what we are doing here is we are having a bunch of scientific teams and a bunch of entrepreneurs. And we are having a two days event in which the uh, scientific teams are explaining the, the ideas they are having, the projects, the prototypes, and the, um, they are matching with the entrepreneurs. So they are meeting two days and at the end of the event, they are creating teams composed by one entrepreneur who usually is like a MBA student or a MBA uh, graduate. Um, that is having this kind of aim to become an entrepreneur and establish a company. And he or she is helping out the scientific team that a lot of times they can, they, they want to even remain at the lab. They have these ideas that they would like to see happening in real life, but they actually don't want to leave the lab. They won't continue with their academia careers or they want to continue working in the workshop or in the lab. So um, we're having this, um, this kind of a commercialization reactor uh, focus on deep tech in digital solutions and so on. This year, three pilots programs in November. And I think it's in Estonia, um, Croatia and Slovenia. And I am seeing a lot of things popping up that are really, really interesting. And I think we should have more of these kind of initiatives. Yes, so, um, yeah, thank you, Veronica. So everybody that is interesting, also maybe to try out how this teaming of, of teams or teaming of startups or early stage ideas uh, works and how to connect. So let me know and I will uh, connect you to Veronica. And I think Veronica, you will leave us also your contact details. So then you can also reach out to her if you're interested to see how it works and maybe um, try it out at your institution. Um, speaking about trying it out at your institution, Hannes, um, how, what is like your uh, inspiration and your motivation for collaborations? I mean, you can see already, yeah, you presented as the UDRES networks and this is also how the ANS project came up. So maybe, uh, may you share your dreams and like your vision with us? Well, um, there are quite a lot of dreams, of course, uh, but but one is it's, it's so um, in a short in a short overview. <laughs> I think I think uh, that that uh, higher education institutions somehow have to reinvent reinvent themselves to to be really uh, ready for what is going on in the present and in in the upcoming uh, future. Um, I think we still uh, live in this uh, academic ivory towers in many senses, uh, although I, at least in some senses I would like to prevent these ivory towers as maybe the last uh, places to, to really think independently and then to do this kind of, of, of science and, and education in a, in a totally free way. But on the other hand, of course, we really have to open these um, uh, things up um, and and uh, this this is uh, still a, a very important issue. Although we are speaking about the third mission of universities since uh, decades now, um, we're still not not really there. And and we need new forms of collaboration. We need um, a new academic culture. And at at UDRES and so within the Eins project, uh, we speak quite a lot about our so-called I culture with this I. So we have the I living labs, we have the I research networks, we have uh, a lot of other things and this I is standing for um, quite a lot of things like uh, inclusion, interdisciplinarity as, as Veronica mentioned, interaction, um, inspiration um, and, and um, innovation of course, international collaboration, uh, intercultural approaches and and and. Um, and uh, it's easy to speak about these things, but, but it's uh, quite a challenge to really uh, make these uh, things happen and then really in, invent uh, this um, uh, eye culture. And, and yes, but at least we are working on it. 
And, and just to mention a, a few things, um, I, I was really uh, already inspired by what uh, Mehmet and, and, and Valer and, and Veronica, of course, uh, uh, said. Um, and I think there are so many interesting uh, startups, uh, for instance, in IT security or in, in data science uh, out there. Some collaborate uh, with us in St. Pölten, others uh, with, with our partners um, uh, within UDRES all over Europe. But um, we need new ways, new formats uh, for some kind of matchmaking for, for new forms of collaboration. So far, I think, uh, for instance, our um, um, security startups here in St. Bolton have never met uh, uh, Mehmet and, and, and his colleagues. And, and I think this is uh, a pity. There could be uh, so many things uh, done to doing together. And, and it, this is what, what we have to, to enable and to, to support as, as universities. So this idea and, and the vision of um, universities as um, collaborative, as, as, as somehow platforms for collaborative uh, innovation. Um, and this is what, what we are working on. This is what we are dreaming about. I'm taking your last sentence, universities as platforms for collaborative, can you help me? Collaborative cooperation, right? Or collaborative work? Collaborative innovation. Um, innovation, think, yeah. thank you. Then it is always. But as, 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 just maybe to explain this uh, once again a, a little bit further, I think um, we know all these uh, discussions about uh, product uh, versus platforms uh, and so on um, and then these uh, very different business models and i think uh, universities still consider usually themselves as as uh, product oriented of course it, it put it in, in brackets um, our products at universities are the degrees of our students and then are the, the the papers the patents of of our researchers um, but i think this is really an old-fashioned approach and and we really have to uh, develop ourselves into these kind of platforms and really make interaction happen, uh, support new kind, new forms of, of, of collaboration. And and um, I, I was uh, just a couple of months ago in, in, in a, a panel discussion where a colleague of mine said uh, there will be no degrees anymore in, in, in just a few years. I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if he is right, but uh, we now need this kind of macro credentials and, and um, this this uh, education when and where it's it's needed and so on. So this are totally new mindsets, totally new um, ways ways of thinking about higher education and research and innovation and so on. And and yeah, it's it's somehow difficult for for uh, old academic institutions, um, but it's also the future and it's it's difficult but also very excited, and exciting. Yes, I, I like, of course, I like that. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, so, um, but what I was thinking when I was also, that's why I asked you to have this sentence, like kind of a full sentence. And these universities as platforms for collaborative innovation, because I mean, this is what you, Vala, presented to us, right? So, so if I get you right, I would ask you, I have to think, so it is one question. Um, was asking five questions at one time. So what is your dream cooperation? And is this what you have created with your startup, something that is this dream cooperation for you? So is this digital platform your dream cooperation or what What inspires you in, in creating this? Uh, actually, mm, I totally agree with Hans that I see the future totally connected. All the universities, uh, research units, uh, individuals, government agencies, all of them will be connected. Uh, and uh, I don't know, here in Portugal, uh, the plan that we have in Polytechnic Institute of Setubal is that for master students, even after the COVID, 50% of the classes will be online. So it means that the whole universities is going to be uh, online. And uh, that's why that without that, uh, there is a gap in the market to have an online platform that uh, to create a user base from all different disciplines, 
from mathematics, chemistry, data science, uh, manufacturing, everything. And having some uh, utilizing uh, and taking advantage of artificial intelligence and recommender systems to have a very uh, fit matchmaking between the uh, people uh, to share their skills together. And in that way, just imagine that in terms of the collaborations and cooperations as a big dream that you mentioned, just imagine that for each university, uh, have an analytics dashboard for each university, for each faculty and department to see what are the uh, talents in terms of the skills and what are the skill gaps? What are the top uh, training opportunities in each university? And with some, just some clicks, easily can present that training uh, programs to all over the world. For example, if someone is providing some things about, some workshops about entrepreneurship in uh, Lisbon, then we need the systems that use the artificial intelligence to find all over the world who are interested to learn entrepreneurship. And the notifications we send to all of them, and just imagine that for each skill that we will have some workshops, some events for upskilling, with some clicks, with just some clicks, uh, we can have our audience from all over the world. And Having such kind of the platform, we can achieve another very important target, global level knowledge lake. Just imagine that for each keyword that you want to search, you have access to all uh, active training programs. You have access to all talks, webinars, uh, some articles and contents, and everything that this user base is sharing. And it is one of our goals in um, Edis Galaxy to create such kind of the online knowledge lake to provide uh, all um, different aspects of the information in terms of the upskilling ecosystem in a, a very easy to use format. Thank you. Then, I mean, Mefat, your startup, I mean, as if, if I got it right from our last talk that we had, is like, it's also, um, you are not a platform, but I mean, you have also so many education offerings, but also innovation offerings. So, I mean, this is like, um, um, like how, how, what is your inspiration in that? And, and like, what is your, your next step or your next big dream? how to achieve it through cooperation or collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a, a dream that it's mostly to make all our students who are studying successful. It is really me, the digital world has grown really big. And this big world, it's, uh, it's giving everyone opportunities, not only IT people to work remote. Now, almost every job now, it's 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 a uh, remote every big corporations uh every every single most now it's it's remote so this uh what what i want is like the students that uh, sit there i i want to have that in future all universities can be connected to to have a similar platform that every students every student for a marketing can collaborate with the students in it and those two students together can start a company Nowadays, opening a company and working with older people, it's really easy. I, I can take myself example. I am from Albania. I am studying and working in Latvia. I have a company in Estonia. We work with United States clients. There are no more limitations. Nowadays, what the digital world had given to us, that there are no limitations. There is just the will and the, the strategy and how people are determined to, to work. And this is what uh, I, I, I want. This is also why we were working with high schools. We were doing those trainings on security in, in a way that they understand it. I was mostly doing these calls when we were training them was outside in a park, not in a class. 
uh, when we were face to face, because we the most important thing to understand how people think is to, to make them feel uh, re relaxed and not stress on what they do. And this is one of the, the most security perspectives we have, like people has to be relaxed and have to understand that uh, everything can be in collaborative way. People can uh, achieve big things together. This is the, the most important important thing so so to, together what will be my dream is like to have those universities collaborate together students gather together share their ideas have different departments that they might be business marketing tourism it if 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 we gather all of those together th there might be different ideas that come in and they, they can be potential uh, products, softwares, platforms that they can release that, that, that uh, I strongly believe can change our generation for even better. The, the remote uh, allow us to do it. The, as for example, also on, on this call, we are from different countries. There, there are no more restrictions. So I, I uh, this is what, what I, I dream of. I, I want like the, the students to, to have to be able to have a platform when they can communicate with each other remote in person and, and i believe that universities as well can can support and, and help on this uh, in innovative because what products we, we can and what results we can achieve is i am pretty confident will be really really good all right um it's getting a bit uh for me i'm getting a bit tired so i will i have an idea also how to um to uh to go uh to the next point of the of the ah, inspiration the talk that we have um prepared and yes you can hear my um I'm trying to share my screen <laughs> there, yes so the next the next part um in our discussion is that we we have on our agenda is how to build strong relationships. So, Mefat, if it's okay for you, I will I will ask you because uh, we were discussing then this build strong relationships. So, which insider tips of the this win win situations that you have described or these dreams that you have? I will give you a dif difficult task. So. Um, maybe one after the other. I, I mean, I trust in the in the cooperation that that we have for each other, and we see each other here as speakers too. So I would say, like then, that you sh you share like your insider tips. Like let's make a high goal, like three of them. You can start with one, and then when you have one, maybe writing it down and handing over. So yeah. So if you if you could summarize um, your dreams now into a a tip or a hint for our listeners. So what what would be your first one um, effort for this how to build strong relationships? Oh the first thing is to dream big and uh, communicate. Uh, second one to, to have collaborations people should not be afraid to ask. Uh, because every person know it's for sure. So the best thing you can get is, is yes. The worst case is no. So the the the, the main thing and the, the the third is to always always be optimistic and uh, on on those coll collaborations. I can say uh, I have uh, worked a lot. I have failed a lot. That's why uh, I, I am now working and I am studying and I'm trying to, to help others do it because uh, I have a saying that I want students and everyone to know, like uh, my dad told me, like, we should never let failure determine who we are or success to, to say where, where, where we are. We should always be optimistic and we should always try to, to learn and always dream big. If you can dream, you are already halfway there. Thanks. I mean, I will also uh, take take your last comment. Um, I I turned your learn learn quick, so I will give it back to you. Learn. 
and turned it into fail fast because I think this is something that's very important and we do it not enough. So I hope if there is a possibility in Eins, I would like to do something where the people, the idea starters can fail fast and then just learn to make it it successfully. So Mefat, I let you choose. So um, who of the speakers are you inviting to there for their insider tips? All of them. We, we need more ideas and they are great on those. So. I let you take your words, but speakers, it's up we, to you now. We, we can start with uh, Ve Ve Veronica. <laughs> okay, we'll go. So my main team uh, could be to be open, to be open, to listen to people who have a different mindset and yeah, and try to embrace new point of views. Yeah, that could be my main one. Yeah, so I'm just repeating that it's like being open and have new point of views, right? Veronica, then it's up to you to throw the virtual ball to somebody. Hannes, maybe do you want to continue? Hannes? Well, um, from, from my uh, perspective, I think the most important thing or a very important thing at least is uh, trust in passionate and open-minded people. It's uh, usually all about the people and, and not about uh, this or that uh, institution and so on. So um, try to connect and collaborate with these people. Um, don't care whether they come from, from a big, uh, well-known company or one of the top universities or from a very small uh, startup. Um, if, if you think uh, he or she is the right uh, guy to collaborate, then, then do it, go for it. Um, and and uh, as, as you said, yes, uh, we can fail, uh, we learn, we learn quick. Uh, so start with with uh, doing some things and and not make the mistake that that you think you have to care about all the details uh, from the very beginning uh, at once. Um, so in in Europe we are still quite a lot shaped uh, by what in German speaking countries we we call the Deutsche Ingenieurskunst. Um, this this uh, engineers in Europe uh, usually try to um have all the details when when and focus on all these things and have this step-by-step -step approach in a very linear uh sense uh solving all these problems i think uh, this worked uh great at, at least till uh, a few decades ago um but now in this uh sense we we need more this uh um uh, overviews and and um and not doing everything at once, not focusing on 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 each and every uh, detail, but but um, really making things happen and start small things um, and and have more this cyclic uh, approaches, uh, repeat the things again and again, like like startups usually do in in lean startup and and similar methodology. Um, and again, as I said in the beginning, it needs. Uh, the people it needs uh, the, the the trust um, and then you can create added value uh, uh, for all the people involved together thank you hannes i mean then throwing the ball is to vala that's that's obvious so what are your main points or your main insider tips that you give our listeners and students startups idea holders uh actually my big dream is uh being connected to see the whole world the whole uh, in the in individual level in university level research centers government agencies corporates all being uh, interconnected and uh, to create a kind of synergy in um, upskilling ecosystem together not getting in 
interconnected just to have fun, just wasting the time, just like we have in the social networks, Instagram, Facebook, and even LinkedIn. Uh, my dream is having a platform uh, that maybe every hours that we put time in that platform, we counted and we could monitor our uh, upskilling progress and how we can contribute for upskilling the others uh, in our, our the world who needs our skills. I'm still challenging you because yeah, I can as a moderator because it is like, but I would like to know from you, it is of course, because it's over your platform, your digital platform, um, is there like, when you have like this face to face or business to business meetings. So what I would like to know your insider tips, like how, what is for you this, how did you reach to build these strong relationships for your platform to put in all the stakeholders that you have in or to put in all the education that is possible. So what is the work behind it? Because of course now I'm, I'm helping you to look back how did you build these strong relationships to have this platform that is your dream ahead? But how did it happen before? Yeah, but actually uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning, we have a topic called behavioral analysis. Uh, it means that using machine learnings, we can have some algorithms that uh, can uh, analyze the behave, online behaviors of users in social networks in terms of visiting some pages, clicking on some articles, attending in some courses. And based on the, the behavioral analysis as the output, uh, generate a list of skills that you are interested to learn and generate the list of skills that you already have and can share with the others. This is the key point. After having these two kind of the list, and first of all, it will be the dynamic list because maybe now I'm looking forward to learn a statistics, but uh, maybe, for example, next three months is looking forward to learn gardening. You know, so this list will be dynamic. And after having these two lists, what skills every person has to share and what skills he or she would like to learn. Then we can use some mechanisms to uh, bridge these persons together. And uh, that is my big dream that in the world, then it is doable for sure. Because uh, as I presented in my uh, slides, once we can identify these two series of the skills, we can connect people together. And uh, getting back to the method uh, about uh, multidisciplinary approaches. And just imagine that we have some uh, pre-discussion forums that uh, can have some topics in multidisciplinary. For example, having uh, big data analytics uh, applications in medicine for that specific topics, two, studies, two groups of the uh, researchers and the scientists can join. Uh, some people from medicine, medical science, and some people from the uh, big data analytics. And only in an online platform, we can collaborate, we can gather such kind of uh, scientists, researchers from the different fields. And uh, my dream is uh, to have such kind of the platform to, uh, with the final goal of improving the global knowledge, not only in a specific fields, but also in the multidisciplinary approaches. Thank you. Um, yeah, you made it very easy for me now to make a wrap up. Um, Good that we have like these notes that we um, have taken. So yeah, thank you very much, um, Hannes, Vero, Mefat, and Vala for being here with us. Yes, for presenting the ENS project and also the UDRES network for EIT manufacturing and the possibilities that you have for different target groups. 
and and also you Mefat and Vala for presenting us your startups and your dreams and your goals and also like how you envision cooperation in the future and in the past of course that you had um yes to wrap up i think we had a lot of of repeating um inspirations that come of course of the topic uh, that we had that how can we how can we innovate in digital technologies so i think cooperation um also in the meaning of so intersectoral cooperation but also interdisciplinary uh, cooperation you have also then um, taken up cooperation to collaboration i think this is like also something that now comes also um in the field that uh with um mixing teams and mixing tools and i also like the last thing that i tried together from vala but finally um i have realized yeah that this is like just also use ai so if you can use yeah ai you can ask vala to help you to use it for your collaborations and uh for your upskilling um uh, of people um yes so um i would be happy um to continue to see you uh in the next uh, inspirational chats inspiring chats inspirational talks sometimes i i say we have also open lectures um a series to various topics um yeah maybe i should also uh share just surely um the slide that i will share afterwards uh, with you for those ones who will um we'll see so when you follow us on instagram twitter link the linked in facebook or youtube so for example uh this uh, insp insp inspiring chat will be put on YouTube so you can rewatch it and share it with colleagues and so on. So yeah, there you can find all the next events of INS and also of, U of UDRES if you're interesting, interested um, to follow us. And I don't know, do you want to share some contact slides or should we just attach them to the PDF afterwards when we share it? All right. I think it, it's it's kind of evening and dark and yeah so thank you very much speakers and all the listeners looking forward to see you soon again in um, collaborative forms events and matchmakings online platforms uh, uh wherever stay inspired stay fresh dream big thank you very much thank you have a good thank night you. So thank you bye-bye good evening goodbye Bye. Bye.